Hello guys, in this video we are going to discuss the solution of the problem burning tree. So let us look at the problem statement. The problem statement says given a binary tree and a node data called target, find the minimum time required to burn the complete binary tree if the target is set on fire. It is known that in one second all node connected to a given node get burned. That is its left child, right child and parent. So for instance, if this is the binary tree which is given to us and the target node is 8, then the total time it takes to burn the entire tree is 7 unit. So that's about the problem statement folks. Now let us discuss the solution of this problem. So let us say this is the tree which is given to us and the target which is given to us is 8. Now in order to burn the binary tree, if a node is set on fire, so let us say this node has been set on fire then its left child, its right child and its parent will get on fire in one time unit. Now for a given node it is possible to move towards its left or right child because we have a pointer for that but it is not possible to move to its parent node. So for that reason what we are going to do is we are going to have a parent dictionary whose key is the node and its value is parent of node. So for this tree if we want to prepare this parent dictionary then the parent dictionary will look something like this. So one is the node and corresponding to one since one is the root node so there is no parent for it so let us represent that by none. For two the parent is one, three parent is one similarly for rest of the nodes so for node 4 the parent is 2 for 5 parent is 2 and this is how our parent dictionary will look like so once we have parent dictionary with us all we have to do is we have to start from the target node and keep burning the entire tree now let us discuss the algorithm which we are going to use in order to compute the total time it takes to burn the entire tree so let us say this is the tree which we have and we are starting from target 8. Now since 8 is set on fire, it will burn its neighbor in one time unit. The only neighbor of 8 is 5. So 5 will be burned in one time unit. Now if 5 is set on fire, the neighboring node of 5 which is 2 and 7 in burn in another one time unit. So 2 and 7 will be burned in one time unit. Similarly, if 2 and 7 are set on fire, then 4 and 1 are its neighboring node and it will be burned in next one unit. Now, if 1 is set on fire, 3 will be burned in one time unit. Similarly, if 3 is set on fire, 6 will be burned in the next one time unit. And similarly for 9 and 10. Now, if we have to find out the total time it takes to burn the entire tree, then all we have to do is we have to count the number of distinct colors which we have used over here. So as you can see the number of distinct colors which we have used is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And hence we are going to return 7 for this tree and target equals to 8. Now let us formalize the algorithm which we have used over here. So essentially what we are doing is BFS, breadth for search. And while doing BFS, all we are doing is we are keeping a track on the colored number. Now let us discuss this BFS a bit more and then we will move to our pseudocode. So let us say we are starting from 8. So what we are going to do is we are going to maintain a queue just as we do in BFS and we are going to store a tuple in this queue which is 8 and 0. 8 depicts the node and 0 depicts the color number and we are starting from color number 0. Now as we do in BFS we are going to iterate on this queue while queue is not empty and the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to check its neighbor. So as we can see left and right child are none and parent exists. Now using the parent dictionary which we have created we will be able to traverse to parent 
and once we see that the parent exists what we are going to do is we are going to push that parent into our queue so the parent will be pushed and the color number will be increased by one and this since we have operated on we are going to delete it from the queue now the next thing which we are going to do is we are on the fifth node and then we are going to check the neighboring nodes then the neighboring nodes are two and seven so we are going to push two and seven in our queue so two will be pushed and seven will be pushed and since we are able to reach 2 and 7 from 5 itself because of which both the colors of 2 and 7 are set to 2. Again 5 has been operated on so we are going to delete 5 from the queue and we are going to move to the next element. So the next element is 2 and from 2 the neighboring elements are 4 and 1. So let's have that over here. So 4 and the color will be 3, 1 and the color will be 3. 2 and 2 we have operated on so we will take it out from the queue the next node is 7 and 2 and as we can see for 7 the neighboring nodes are 5 and folks I missed to inform about the visited node we are also keeping a track of the nodes we have visited so far so so far we have visited 8 5 and 2 now we are at the 7 node and from 7 node the only neighboring node is 5 and since 5 is already visited because of which 5 entry will not come into this queue now let's move forward so 7 has been operated on now we are at 4 fourth node so this is the fourth node again the neighboring nodes are 2 and 5 and since 2 and 5 are already visited because of which we are not going to do anything on this node then comes the node 1 and from 1 the neighboring nodes are 2 and 3 since 2 is already visited so we are not going to push 2 into our queue but 3 we are going to push and the color for 3 will be 4 and let us mark 3 as visited over here and since we have operated on 1 comma 3 so we are going to delete it now the next element in our queue is 3 comma 4 and from 3 we will be able to visit only node 6 and since 6 is not visited we are going to push it over here 6 and 5 3 and 4 is visited so we are going to move it out from 6 we will be able to move to node 9 only so 9 comma 6 and from 9 we will be able to move to node 10 comma 7 and 9 comma 6 will be moved out and similarly 10 comma 7 will be moved out and and folks i missed to have these nodes over here so 3 6 9 and 10 all will come over here and in this way if you see we have visited or we have burned the entire tree and how much time it takes to burn the entire tree well the time it takes is this seven and that is what we are going to return so that's the discussion of solution folks now let us discuss the pseudocode of this problem so let us say we want to compute the time and root of the tree and target is given to us so as we have discussed the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to populate our parent dictionary so let us say we have a parent global dictionary and initially it is empty similarly we will have a node global variable and initially the value of this node is none and folks with node what we are trying to achieve is this target which is given to us is is, is of integer format and we want a pointer of that node so this node what we are going to do is we are going to keep a node corresponding to this target and this is something which we are going to do when we will be populating our parent dictionary itself so let us say we have a function which is populate parent this function takes root as an input target and none we will discuss what is this none so this is essentially the parent and since parent of root node is none because of which we are passing none over here and when we will discuss this populate parent function we will look into detail on how we are going to update these values and how we are going to populate this parent as well as this node pointer now but for now let us proceed forward let us say using this populate parent function we are able to populate parent dictionary and we are able to find out the node corresponding to target now once we have these two information with us all we have to do is we have to form a queue 
and we are you going to use doubly ended queue and within a queue we are going to keep a tuple which is root of the tree and the color number and to begin with the color number is zero now we are going to iterate on q while q is not zero so while length of q and basically we are doing bfs over here so as we do it in bfs the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to pop an element from the q so root comma color number equals to q dot pop left so once we have popped root from the queue we are going to traverse on its neighboring nodes so let us check its neighboring node well the neighboring nodes are root dot left so if root dot left root dot left not in visited so root dot left is not visited and folks we will have our visited visited dictionary over here so if root dot left exists and root dot left is not visited then we are going to push this on the queue so let us so let us push it so queue dot append and we want to push a tuple so the node is root dot left and what is the color which we are going to assign to this root dot left well the color which we are going to assign is color num plus 1 Similarly, we are going to check its other neighbors, which is root right and parent. So let us check it. So if root dot right and root dot right not in visited, then in such case, root dot right will be appended on the queue. Again, a tuple. So root dot right and the color number is color num plus one. Similarly, let us check for parent. So if parent of root and parent of root not in visited then in such case let us append parent also in our queue and the color number will be color num plus one and in this way we will be able to push the neighbors onto our queue once we have pushed neighbors onto our queue then let us mark this node as visited so visited of row root will be set to true and what is our answer well our answer is equals to color number and all we have to do is and let's say we have an answer variable with us and answer equals to zero and all we have to do is we just have to return this answer towards the end so that's the code logic folks i hope you were able to understand that now in order to complete our pseudo code let us look at our populate parent function as well so populate parent root of the tree is given to us a target integer and the parent of the current root node is over here all we have to do in this case is we have to check if it's an empty tree if it is an empty tree or the root is none then in such case we will just return from this function otherwise we will populate our parent dictionary so parent of root will be equals to parent and also we are going to check if root dot data equals equals to target this is to populate our node so if root dot data equals equals to target then in such case node will be equals to root and in this way basically with this if condition we will be able to find our node corresponding to target and once we have operated on root let us operate on its left and right child so to do so all we have to do is populate parent left child of the tree target remains as it is and what is the parent of root left well the parent of root left is root itself similarly root of right so this will be root dot right and this will be target and root and in this way we will be able to populate our parent as well as we will be able to find our node corresponding to target so that's the entire pseudocode folks now let us see how we have implemented this in python 
So the implementation is same as what we have discussed. We have a parent dictionary and the node. Then we are doing find node. This is equal to populate parent, which is we have discussed in our pseudocode. So this find node essentially it populates the parent and it also finds the target node. Now once we have parent and node populated, all we are doing is BFS. So Q equals to node and the color is what we are initializing Q with. Then visited equals to a dictionary and answer equals to zero. Then we are iterating on Q while length of Q exists. And the first thing which we are doing is we are popping an element from the Q. If left child of root exists and it is not visited, then we are pushing it onto our Q. Similarly for root right and its parent. And towards the end, we are marking this node as visited and answer equals to color num in order to get to our answer. And towards the end, we are just returning answer. So that's the Python code for this folks. Now let us submit our solution. So our code got accepted. That is all from this video folks. In case if you have any question or comment regarding this video, please feel free to use the comment section and I'll try to address them. Thank you.